Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the third Saturday of the month, which means it's time for Saturdays with Sharon, hosted by Dr. Nandita Shah. Please welcome her to the show. It's so nice to see you today. I think you're the guest that I have that's the furthest away. I don't know if what's further, Australia or India, but you're definitely in the top two. Yeah, and it's lovely to be with you. When we're two totally different time zones, opposite from each other directly. But I'm so glad to be here along with other team members. And today's program is very similar to the programs we've had in the past, in the sense that I'm going to talk about a topic. Today's topic is hormonal havoc. And then we have a few testimonials. And we also have a demo. And today's demo is samosas. So I hope you'll all enjoy all of it. Oh, I can't so wait. I love get... samosas. I cannot wait. And you're going to make them oil-free, I hear. Always. Everything of ours is oil-free. Nice. So now I'm going to start my uh, screen share, if you don't mind. And here we have it. Is it good now? It's perfect. Sorry. One second. Sorry. Okay. Now. There we are. So as you know, Sharan stands for Sanctuary for Health and Reconnection to Animals and Nature. And basically we try to eat and live the way nature designed us to eat and live. And as I said, today's topic is hormonal havoc. And the, the reason for this is that I feel that most of the complaints that we see these days are hormonal problems. So what are the common hormonal problems? Diabetes, because insulin is a hormone, and polycystic ovarian disease, hypothyroidism, premature puberty. Premature puberty is so common these days. And infertility is also equally common. And menstrual problems and menopausal problems and acne. So many young girls suffer from this. And prostate enlargement, so many elderly men and even middle-aged men suffer from this. And breast and ovarian and prostate cancers are hormone-dependent cancers. And vitamin D is actually a hormone and so many people have vitamin D deficiency. And gynecomastia, which means that men who have breasts like women, and that's not too uncommon these days either. So what are hormones? Hormones are chemical messengers that are secreted directly into the bloodstream, but they send messages from one part of the body to the rest of the body. So we have two kinds of messengers in our bodies. There are the, there's the nervous system where messages are passed from one place like the brain to another area which is the end organ where the nerve goes. And there are hormones, the endocrine system. So the neuroendocrine system is what sends messages all around our body. And some hormones are listed here. And I'm not going to read them all out because this isn't something that you need to remember. But I'll say a little bit about some of the hormones. Hormones are sec secreted by endocrine glands. And the most important endocrine gland is the pituitary gland. It's the conductor of the whole hormonal orchestra. So it, the pituitary gland conducts the work of all the other hormonal glands. And then there's the pineal gland, which produces melatonin, which controls sleep. And the hypothalamus, which controls the body temperature, the hunger, the moods the thirst, sleep, sex drive. Then there's the thyroid, which controls metabolism and heart rate. And the parathyroid, which controls the calcium in the body. And the thymus, which produces the T cells for the immune system. And then there's the adrenal glands, which control the sex drive, produce stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. And the pancreas, insulin, we already know that one. 
and the ovaries in women, which secrete estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone, and the testes in men, which produce testosterone. So all these actually, you know, work in harmony most of the time so that we don't even know that they're working. Our body is so amazing. I, I'm always amazed at, you know, how the body works. Now, it's unfortunate that we have so many hormonal problems these days, but we've already talked about this, that the key to solving any problem is to look at the cause of the problem. So when we go into regular medicine, they're always working to solve symptoms like if someone has hypothyroidism, then they get extra thyroid hormone, or if they have hyperthyroidism, then the, you know something is given to them so that their thyroid stops working or producing so much um, thyroxine. And then if they have, uh, say, breast cancer, then they're given something so that they stop producing hormones or female hormones in their body so that the breast cancer doesn't develop and so on. But when we want to solve any problem, we are going to understand the cause of the problem. Why does diabetes occur? Or why does hypothyroidism occur? And the main causes of hormonal havoc these days are, number one, hormones themselves. As I said, all the hormones are orchestrated by the pituitary gland, which is a gland at the back of the brain. And when one hormone goes out of balance, others also go out of balance. And so there's havoc. And we'll talk more about how these hormones go out of balance. And then the second is chemicals. Chemicals are hormone disruptors. And the third is fat because fat in your body holds on to hormones and doesn't let it, you know, leave the body like it should. So let's talk about hormones. Where are we getting this, these hormones that don't belong to us from? One could be medicines like steroids, oral contraceptives, thyroxine, vitamin D, hormone replacement therapy, or insulin therapy. These all are hormones. And then number two is animal products because all animals produce the same hormones as we do. So when we consume home, when we consume animal products, we're consuming their hormones as well. And nowadays, the animals that we consume can have even more hormones because they're given growth hormones to make them grow as fast as possible. Or like, for example, cows are given oxytocin to produce more milk and so on. So we're taking in all those hormones of those animals. You know, when cows are pregnant and then they have a baby so that they can produce milk, the baby is taken away from them, but they're also impregnated within two months of delivery. So now they're, uh, they're lactating and pregnant at the same time, which increases the hormone content of milk many fold. So we have, you know, so many hormones coming from milk and chickens are made to lay 250 eggs a year when normally they would have laid 25 or 30. So this is also done by manipulation sometimes with hormones as well. So when we consume these animal products, we're consuming a whole lot of hormones and this upsets our hormonal balance. And then animals and plants can be injected with hormones. I already talked about animals being injected with hormones, but even plants can be injected with hormones to make them grow bigger or faster. So before I go ahead, I'm going to stop my share and I want to ask um, Vandana, who's with me, to share her story. Vandana was a vegetarian and she consumed plenty of dairy and she was overweight and she had hypothyroidism. And, um, you know, she heard about Sharan and she tried the lifestyle and now she's totally off 
all thyroxin and really well and has lost a lot of weight and she's one of our really great cooking instructors so vandana would you like to share your story yes doctor thank you uh, very much so uh, actually in the year 2000 uh, during my pregnancy uh, in a routine blood test i found out about my hypothyroidism that time my tsh level was uh, 49 and seeing that doctor put me on a uh, medicine like uh, per day i was taking 136 mg per day doses and even i was still facing problems like weight gain issues and then uh, hair loss lethargy heart palpitation was so much and this was the major symptoms i suffered through all my pregnancy and i was overweight and i was looking for some solution then i came to know about oil free cooking class from sharan uh, and i started attending sharan's cooking classes and being a good cook i love cooking so um, it was uh, very easy uh, for me to adapt this lifestyle and i started cooking oil free uh, food and making my food everything should be oil free and it was so easy with this kind of food to lose weight and with oil free and dairy free cooking it is very easy and even food is delicious uh, food was very delicious even it was so easy for my family to adjust with it so they didn't mind it and they also got healthier and my son got free from eczema and excess weight so many disease and i also lost 13 kg of weight and my tsh levels are normal and now i am totally off medication yeah yeah that's really inspiring story and i think uh, you know third you you lost 13 kilos right yes. 13 yes. kilos must be around 26 pounds or something yes. in that range so that's right. a lot of weight that you lost and when yes. did you start sharan lifestyle it's like 8 uh, and 1/2 years ago okay yes yeah. so eight yeah. and a half years and you know now she's totally and how long have you been free of medicines uh so it's around um, uh, six and a half years six and a half years totally yeah. free of thyroxin and yes. lost so many kilos right so that's and even i was taking i was taking medicine since like 17 years continuous no no Op- other option just to have medicine life long yeah yeah so wonderful after 17 years of taking thyroxin now you're totally free of thyroxin and you know i know vandana's family and i know what a great uh, cook she is and i'm going to be giving a seminar in lucknow later this year and i'm taking her along with me because we have 400 people there and we want to make sure that all the food is good and she's going to help the chefs work with that food so thank you vandana for this and you. you know because she's such a good cook her family is so happy with the food and her sons are um you know great in um, in their sports yeah. like you do you want to tell them about that yes so my younger son was a national level boxer player and uh, international level he played the throw ball and he was the number one in all the team he got the year full year of the trophy only to him and all following this lifestyle only whole food plant based lifestyle he traveled also a lot and he managed everything and now he is staying outside from home but then also he is managing very well and he's yeah. completely vegan and another son has become a vegan chef so yeah. yeah she's really amazing okay i'm going to go back to my screen share so you saw that when vandana took hormones out of her lifestyle then she solved her problem of hormonal issues or in this case hypothyroidism the second problem is chemicals chemicals are hormone disruptors and chemicals can come into our lives from foods containing chemicals like non organic foods conventionally grown foods or um processed foods and packaged foods have chemicals in them too 
And then we shouldn't forget that medicines are chemicals. And personal care products, all these things that we put into our mouth, like toothpaste and mouthwash, but also the things that we put on our skin are absorbed in less than 26 seconds. And so all those soaps and shampoos and perfumes and deodorants and hair dyes and hand sanitizers, all of these things enter our bodies and they need to be broken down by the liver and excreted by the kidneys. They are a load on the, our bodies and they're also hormone disruptors. So here's a chart where you can see different cosmetics and the average number of chemicals in the second column and some of the most worrying chemicals and some of them have so many chemicals that it was too hard to write them all down here. For example, you can see that perfumes have on an average 250 different chemicals. And in the last column, you can see the side effects of these chemicals. It could be linked to cancer because chemicals are carcinogens or hormone disruption, or it could even disrupt the immune system. And, you know, I really cut this chart as short as I could because there were so many things to write in each and every column, but I just wrote the most important ones. So, you know, all these products that we use, they're bad for animals because they're tested on animals. But they're also so bad for us because all these chemicals are entering our bodies. And so we can get, you know, purer chemicals or we can even make, I mean, purer um, personal care products. So we can even make them by ourselves. And you can search online for so many do-it-yourself products. And then there are home care products. And all these home care products we know contain a lot of chemicals. And these are harmful as well. And, you know, this is a um, link to a BBC news page where they said that women usually suffer more from poor because they're using cleaning products all the time and this can be so harmful to health. And then there are things, chemicals that find our way into the food through our kitchen. For example, when we use bottled water, have you ever drunk bottled water and noticed that it tastes and smells different? Or that Teflon pan, Teflon is a chemical that goes into your food when you're cooking in it. Or even plastic boxes and bags and things that we buy in them. You know, the plastic is made from certain chemicals and some of them leach into our foods or cooking in aluminum, or even heating in aluminum, especially if the food has some tomatoes or something sour in it. And that microwave, which we often heat so many foods in, in different kinds of materials from melamine or plastic, or, you know, these can harm us as well because they come leaching into the food. And so we really have to be careful and avoid all these things in the kitchen as well. And this can help us avoid chemicals. So here again, before I go on, I want to stop my screen share and invite in Manika. And Manika was a person who was eating out and eating a lot of junk food and using different chemicals as well until she found herself having a lot of acne problems and she solved it with a whole food plant-based diet. So Manika, would you like to share your story? Uh, yes, thank you, ma'am. Uh, basically, I uh, was a vegetarian. However, I was a heavy dairy eater. I loved my milk, cheese and butter, everything. So as soon as I got married, I... Uh, was applying all sorts of chemicals on my face and also uh, my lifestyle had changed so I was eating out more often and within a month I started to see the acne breakouts on my skin. It was uh, very severe so I consulted doctors as well, the dermatologist who had suggested that I pop in some medicines. I was uh, not only eating 
uh, like taking medicines, but also ensuring that uh, I apply many uh, ointments on my face, but nothing was helping. And uh, it was only during my uh, tryst with uh, trying different treatments that I stumbled upon uh, one of the videos uh, of Dr. Nandita, where she had mentioned that uh, uh, the dairy, uh, the, the hormones that are contained in dairy actually lead to acne and many other problems in women. So since it was coming from a doctor, I thought, okay, let me, let me try stopping dairy. Although I was, I loved uh, dairy in my diet. So uh, I stopped dairy altogether because uh, uh, I, I really wanted uh, some result and some respite. And uh, to my surprise, within a month, I saw uh, that the new breakouts had stopped. And uh, I, I was quite amazed because uh, all this while I was undergoing so many treatments and it was not helping. And uh, just a switch in my diet was uh, giving me results. So then I went on to understand the Sharon lifestyle more. I started uh, to have more plant-based foods and the whole foods. Uh, and thereafter, within three months, I saw not, not even a single new acne breakout. And also the scars were started uh, to get cleared. My skin was getting cleared. And uh, not only that, with this shift in the lifestyle and when I was eating more whole foods and more fruits and uh, not consuming dairy, I lost almost eight kgs in three months. And uh, I've been following this lifestyle ever since. So one and a half years into this lifestyle, lifestyle I've lost almost 11 kgs, which is approximately 24 pounds of weight. And I feel healthier. It's not just on the outside, but internally, I feel so much at peace with myself, so much more calmer and uh, more confident and more active, which I had never felt before. So I think it's just a new me altogether. And uh, yeah, this is my way forward. And I really thank Dr. Nandita for that. Yeah, thank you so much for Thank you, Manika, for sharing your story. And I have to say that Manika recently did our facilitator training program. And now she's joined our team just recently. So welcome to our team also, Manika. It's really great to have thank, you with us. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen again. And, you know, Plastic also ends up in our body in different ways. And there's some websites that say that we could be consuming the equivalent of a credit card per week. Imagine that. How could it be? And one of the ways is because we're producing so much garbage that rainwater seeps through the garbage into the groundwater and it takes, you know, plastics with it. But I was just thinking of all the different ways in which plastic ends up in our bodies. And I managed to write quite a few. So here's what I wrote. Bottled water, we talked about that. And frozen foods. Because, you know, the chemicals of plastic get into the food when it's in the uh, frozen in a plastic bag. Or microwave food. Or fish. Because there's so much plastic in the ocean that it, you know, microplastics end up in fish. And when we eat fish, the plastic comes back to us. And then the animals that were fed fish. And these days, there's so much, um, you know, when they do trawling and take all the fish that comes in their nets, there are fish that we don't eat as a species. And so they are sent to rendering plants where they're dried up and fed to animals in our food chain. So all the plastics in the fish that we didn't eat are also coming back to us through other animals in our food chain. And then there are the animals that were fed rendered animal products. Like for example, if you're eating cows who have been fed uh, dried up fish, then you're eating the plastic in the fish. But when it goes up the food triangle it's actually getting concentrated so 
animals that have been eating fish have more plastic in their bodies and then we eat them. So the plastic increases. And then animals that are fed on garbage. And this maybe doesn't happen so much in the US, but in India, we don't have enough feed, food to feed our animals. So the animals are often sent out to fend, fend for themselves and they go to these garbage dumps and eat anything. And since people are throwing away um, organic food that animals could eat in plastic bags, they often eat the plastic as well. We have a huge problem of plastic in our slaughtered animals' stomachs or even animals suddenly dying of so much plastic in their stomach that they can't eat anything else. And yet, all the parts of the body of the animal that we don't eat goes to the rendering plant and gets dried up and is fed back to animals in our food chain, including all that plastic. And then, of course, the garbage, and we talked about that, and microbeads and detergents dental fixtures have plastic in them and nowadays you know some of the cavity fillings are also different types of polymers and then microbeads in toothpaste and different things that we use disposable cups thermocol or even plastic cups especially if you pour a hot beverage in a plastic cup or even a paper cup that's lined with plastic, the plastic is coming back to us. And then cosmetics and air, you know, you can even breathe plastic through air because it, you know, breaks up into tiny little fibers and it's found that sometimes when they're recycling plastic, plastic goes into the air and comes back to us through our breath. So in short, sources of chemicals are non-organic foods, packaged foods, medicines, personal care products, home care products, plastics, and it looks a bit daunting. But when you start trying to change, it's easy because there's so many ways these days that we can avoid all this stuff. And if when we avoid all this stuff and when we eat more whole plant-based foods, we are already getting healthier. And then there's environmental pollution as well, which, which we can't do so much about. But we can, we can stop adding to it in every way possible. And then the third we said is fat, because fat holds on to hormones and the fat could come from oil or butter or margarine, but it could also come from all animal products. All animal products are full of fat. When you boil milk, chicken, fish, or even meat, you get fat on top. So why is dairy so bad for us? Because milk contains fat. It contains hormones. It contains pus because... Animal udders are not meant for human hands or milk machines. They're meant for baby calves' mouths. And so when we put milk machines on udders, they're always injured, infected, indurated. And in order to control this pus, cows are given antibiotics regularly in their feed. So that comes back to us through dairy. And then... There's a concentration of pesticides because all the food that the cow ate, the pesticides are concentrated in the cows and comes out through the milk. And then, of course, rendered products that we just talked about, which the cow is fed. So this is a rendering plant where you can see that all the stuff from the slaughterhouse, which is not used by humans, goes to the rendering plant and that includes the blood and the hooves and the hair, but it also includes the plastic that was on the tags of their ears or anywhere else. And so it comes back to us through what is fed to animals. And of course, you know, since we now know that hormones 
uh, like cortisol and adrenaline are stress hormones and they spread stress. And when cows are stressed to produce milk for us, then they produce adrenaline and cortisone and that comes back through the milk to us. And that's why we're more stressed than ever before in the history of humanity today. Now, what about organic milk? And truly organic milk also contains fat and hormones because hormones are natural to the animals and then pus because there are others still are not meant for milk machines, but it may not contain the antibiotics. So now we're consuming more pus and we're definitely consuming stress. Now, one of the questions I often get is, is soy harmful because of the phytoestrogens? And I just want to say that phytoestrogens are not estrogens and they don't have the same effect or a hormonal effect that estrogens do have. And phytoestrogens can be found in all these foods. They're not hormones. They don't affect us. And we really don't need to worry about soy. But we do need to worry about genetically modified soy because genetically modified soy produces its own um, pesticide within the a bean and so when we consume genetically modified soy we're consuming chemicals and that can be harmful so in summary hormonal problems are caused by hormones fat and chemicals chemicals and plastics are hormone disruptors hormonal treatments can cause problems as well and that's why we should avoid them and that's why I was so great for Vandana to get off all the hormonal treatments that she was on and we need to reduce and eliminate chemicals in our food and environment and phytoestrogens are not harmful and soy per se is not harmful so what you can do is always select organic soy if you're going to consume soy. So now, before I go on, I want to stop my share and ask Anjali to come in. And Anjali actually came to Sharan because she had piles and the piles weren't healing. And so she went on a Sharan lifestyle and she lost a lot of weight. I knew her at that time and she was so enthusiastic and spreading the message of Sharan and she wanted to join Sharon, but she found she had a big surprise that after 13 years of marriage, where she never conceived naturally, she suddenly conceived. So Anjali, do you want to tell them that story? Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, when I was very young, I used to get irregular period of cycles. Uh, and, uh, you know, I used to have cramps also, but my mother said this is very normal for any young girl when she begins with the periods and maximum I have used hot water bags to, you know, combat my, uh, my period, uh, cramps. So uh, after that, I got married and for almost 12, 13 years, we, uh, like we didn't have any children or any kind of things. And my husband and myself were okay that, you know, it's okay not to have children. We were fine. And so we, I never bothered to go to any doctor, uh, you know, for, to find out why or, you know, what treatments to be taken or etc. So we were okay with our lives. In 2015, I, I developed piles, which were very bad. And, uh, and I, I switched to whole plant-based diet. And within the span of three months time, my piles reversed. And that gave me a confidence. And uh, I continued with this whole plant-based diet. And uh, suddenly seeing changes in my body, my periods became regular. And uh, I did not have any cramps. My husband also, you know, got impressed. And he said, okay, even I will follow your, uh, and supported and followed the diet. And uh, he lost around 18 kgs. I lost around 12 kgs in the span of six, seven months. And uh, we were in for surprise at the age of 39. That is like, you know, almost you are losing hope. I, at that point, I conceived naturally. And uh, today he's seven years old. My son is seven years old and we are a happy family and uh, everything is fine. I'm in fact going through a menopause, but yeah, we are managing well. 
everything is like we, we have a life without medicines thank you anjali for sharing that story which is really inspiring and so i'm just going to end really quickly with my screen share and then bring in vandana so um uh, here we go okay so we talked about this and what can you do to prevent and reverse hormonal disorders sharan's five point plan which is plant based whole organic and check and supplement vitamins b12 and d if they are low reduce the chemicals in your life minimize medications if possible and reversing disease also requires a shift in consciousness like just a intention that i want to do everything it takes to get well and we can help you we have talks and workshops and seminars and you can go to our website which is at the bottom of every slide and um, see what kind of events we have many of them are online so anyone can attend them from anywhere or you can get the recording we have fabulous detailed online consultations that can be done on zoom and so can be done from anywhere in the world and we have publications and there are a few publications that you can download for free we also have cooking classes and retreats and you can check out our website and our youtube channel for other talks like this and of course you know that i've done several talks like this on saturdays with sharan with chef aj which i'm so happy to do uh these are some of our books that are available to download for free and the reversing diabetes in 21 days has to be paid for but sharan healthy living is also for free so i'm going to stop my screen share right now and ask vandana to come and show us how to make whole plant based samosas without any oil and in a short time vandana over to you thank you doctor so now i will start with oil free samosa recipe and chef aj maybe you can show both vandana's um, videos apps absolutely yeah so now i am starting with my recipe so this samosa recipe we are going to make oil free and this is totally whole food plant based so i will just show you what are the ingredients i am going to use for this recipe so these are some we are going to make stuffing for the samosa so for that i am using uh, potatoes these are steamed potatoes and with the skin i have not removed the skin so these are uh, chopped and steamed some steam green peas then some green chili is grated ginger and some spices i am going to use garam masala dhaniya powder uh, coriander powder red chili powder turmeric powder rock salt or pink salt you can use some uh, green coriander leaves so these are the stuffing ingredients so first i will start making stuffing then i will explain about how to make the outer covering so i'll switch on the gas so i am using stainless steel pan we are not using any aluminium or non stick or any teflon coating vessels so you can just use nice thick bottom steel pan so just because we are not going to use any oil so just make your pan little hot and after it heated properly then you start adding your ingredients so first i am going to add 
ginger so this is grated ginger if you like cumin or something you can always add but uh, this uh, samosa is uh, flavored with only ginger and green chili so i am adding grated ginger some chopped green chilies and to saute this if you want you can add little bit of salt so it will not stick to your pan and roast it properly so if you are uh, like new to oil free cooking always do your cooking on a low flame otherwise it will stick to your pan and food will get burned so i'm just roasting this ginger or any time if you feel like it is sticking to your pan you can always sprinkle some water one teaspoon or two teaspoon of water you can add so it will not stick to the pan so i'm roasting this ginger i'm getting nice flavor of aroma of this ginger grated ginger so now this is roasted properly now i'm going to add green peas so these green peas are already steamed so we are not boiling boiling just avoid uh, too much of boiling your uh, food you can always steam even potatoes i have not boiled i steam the potato any veggies if you want to cook you can always steam it so now i am roasting and uh, now i can add little bit of water because now it is sticking to pan water and then i will add little water and then all the spices so that all the spices will coat to this green peas and then we are going to add the potatoes so i am adding little bit of water and then cook now i will add some spices turmeric powder coriander powder then some garam masala and red chili powder so chilies you can add according to your taste you can add or reduce like because we have added green chili also so you can skip or if you like little spicy you can add red chili powder so this, whenever you are adding some spices dry spices always lower the heat otherwise uh, the spices will may burn so now i will add little water to cook this dry spices now we'll add some steamed and mashed potatoes with the skin and i will add little salt i have added little salt with the ginger grated ginger now i will add according to the taste now mix it properly all the masala spices green peas everything should be mixed so if you feel like it is taking time you can always lower the heat don't do it on high flame and just with the help of this spoon mash the potatoes also and so it will mix with the masalas potatoes will get all the flavor from the masala and it will mix properly just in between press with the spatula yeah when it is mixed properly then we are going to add the fresh coriander leaves i'm just mixing it if you see the chunks you can always crush it yeah and then keep pressing with the 
uh, spatula so it will mix properly yeah now this is properly mixed now switch off the flame and then add some coriander leaves now we are going to keep this aside for little bit cool down so that till that time we can make the outer covering for making our samosa so i will just keep this aside now i will show you the ingredients for the outer covering so outer for outer covering i am using very few ingredients so this is whole wheat flour this is whole wheat flour i am using okay whoever is uh, whoever wants to make gluten free or something if they are uh, used to handle the gluten free flour you can always make it with jowar ragi or any millet flour also so this is whole wheat flour and this is some carom seeds carom seeds so this i am going to add it to the flour and some coconut butter so this is coconut butter how to make coconut butter you have to just take desiccated coconut powder and put it in a small mixer grinder and grind so coconut uh, desiccated coconut will release its own oil and then it will form into butter so we have not removed the fiber from it so this is coconut butter and we are going to add salt so these four ingredients we are going to add and just uh, you have to make the normal chapati dough so i'll show you the dough so i have just kneaded this dough this is just like normal soft like a chapati dough so now from this, this dough you can make it and keep it for half an hour and after that you can start making your samosa so you have to make these kind of balls so from one ball you can make make two samosas so now i will show you how to roll this you can dust some flour and take the ball and just keep like this and press with your hands like this so whatever cracks will be there in the dough it will smoothen bit now i am going to roll this so we we are not going to roll this chapati into a round circle we are just going to give some oval shape okay so this is like a oval shape now what we are going to do we are going to cut from the center so so if you don't know how to uh, choose the center you just lift this and fold it and just do this uh, little bit press so you will get the exact center line then you can cut it from here so this is one sheet and this is two so from one bowl you can make two samosas then we'll take some water and we are, we will start making samosa so first you take this samosa sheet and apply water on the half side like this half side and now lift the other side and keep it in the center and this side you have to stick it here like this so you will form a cone then just press with like this little bit pressing and then hold it like a cone and then add your stuffing this is little hot so you can wait till it become cool down and then add it 
and then just press it little bit. Now you have to apply water all the side in the circle like this. Okay, now this side, take this corner and stick it here like this. And this corner, you have to stick it here. And then press. Like this. Can you see properly? Yeah. Like this. So you will make samosa. I'll show you one more. Apply water on the half of the side. Then this side, you have to keep it in the center. And this uh, water side, you lift and put it here and make a cone. So as soon as you make the cone, just put all the stuffing till on the top. So I'm just adding all the stuffing. And then apply water on all the circle, like all the edges. Okay, and then this side, you have to stick it here. And this, stick it here. And then press properly. So your samosa is ready. So after making your samosa, then what you have to do, you can bake in the oven till it be outer side is become brown in color. Or you can do it in air fryer also. So I'll show you the baked one, how you can do in air fryer, you have to just turn it because uh, See, so I have already baked the samosa and kept it ready to show you. So this is this is made in air fryer. You can use it the use it oven also. But in air fryer, you have to just twist your samosa so that backs uh, because in air fryer you get heat only from top, not from the bottom. But when you are doing in oven, you get the heat from both the side. So no need of you know uh, uh, flipping in between. But in air fryer, if you are doing, you have to do it. So 10 minutes on one each side, you have to do it in air fryer for uh, on 180 degree. Yeah, thank you, doctor. I can't hear you, doctor. Thank you, Vandana, for this lovely recipe. And, you know, we are eating Vandana samosas all the time and we really love them. So thank you so much. And with this, and I know we're all in a hurry to end, so we are going to end this episode of Saturdays with Sharon. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Well, I, uh, this was a wonderful presentation. I just would like to ask you one question, if it's okay, Dr. Shah. Yes. Yes. And that yes. is, let me just let me just change the screen. And so I can see you, you know, you talk about hormonal havoc. And the question I have is, does this ever affect men the way it affects women? Yes, so that's why I talked about uh, prostate enlargement and prostate cancer and gynecomastia when men produce breasts like women, but men can also suffer from hypothyroidism. But the reason women are more prone to hormonal problems is because they have more fat on their body in general, right? But yeah. if we eliminate all the fat, it's easy to get out and uh, probably also because women use so many chemicals in the form of cosmetics. That makes a lot of sense. So many people are still afraid to consume soy, especially men. They think they'll get man boobs, for example. And it's just the opposite, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, those samosas look incredible. They, they Boy, do you serve them like usually with like a delicious chutney, for example? Yes, that's she had the chutney. Vandana, do you want to tell them what's in the chutney as well? Yes. So uh, this is date and tamarind chutney. So I have used some date paste and some tamarind pulp and mix it together and added some spices like a little bit of red chili, black salt, little bit of ginger powder and just boil it. So it will and become a little Yes, and we have, I have the recipe in the description as well. Oh my God, yeah, that looks yes. fantastic. That mouth watering. Well, thank you all. This is a wonderful presentation. One more thing, doctor. So, if uh, you know, 
some people get ready made uh, tortillas so if they want make this samosa so they can make it with the tortillas also like homemade chapati what we make it so from that also they can cut and they can make samosa if they want i can show like if if we have time that is a great idea yeah, so we could just take our regular tortillas that we can find already made in the grocery store and yes. do that instead of making the dough yes. that could be a time saver for a lot of people yeah so if you want i can just show you quickly yeah, I would I would love to see that because I think that's that's, yeah. that's going to help a lot of people maybe make this recipe that didn't want to make the dough. That is very sure. clever. Yeah. So uh, can you see my camera? Yes. Yeah. So this is the homemade tortilla I have made with the same dough. So now what we can do, how I cut the dough, the same way we have to cut this also from the center. You can use your pizza cutter also to cut your tortillas. And now, yeah, see, you can see the two pieces. So now, because this is cooked tortilla, so we need something to stick. So what I did, I have just made this slurry with same uh, uh, whole wheat flour. I just added little salt, whole wheat flour and little water to make a thick slurry so that it will help to stick the tortillas. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to how I did the same way I'm going to do, I'm just going to apply a little bit of this paste. And then same way I'm going to do this. How I made the samosa like this. So we have to make the cone and then you can fill. Just stuff it oh with God. the same stuffing what we have made it. That's incredible. Yeah, because uh, you get the ready-made tortilla, so you can always use that. Then again, you have to, because this is cooked one, you can't apply water. So I have to use this slurry. So I'm just going to use my uh, finger to apply this on all the side. And then stick together. I'm so glad you took the time to show this, because this will help a lot of people that aren't wanting yes, to make yes. the dough. Because we yes, can so easily you... get both corn or flour tortillas in the States. Yeah, so this way you can make samosas. Oh my God. Just stick and, and just because stuffing is cooked, even tortillas are cooked, you have to just put it in air fryer or for baking just to make a little crisp from outside. That's it. That was And your great. samosas are have ready. You, have you ever tried freezing this even before, either before or after? Yes. Them? yes, you can freeze. Yes, you can do this and you can freeze and whenever you want, just thaw for some time and then you can again bake it. Oh. I have tried that, yeah. Oh my God, you've just given me so many ideas. Thank you so much. I love that. Dr. Shah, have you ever thought of putting out a cookbook with all the wonderful recipes of the guests you've had on the show? Well, we do have a cookbook that everyone can download for free. And it has about 70 recipes, but we also have 600 recipes on our website for free. So I hope that everyone, and all of them are whole food plant-based, so I really hope that everyone will try some of our recipes and enjoy them all. Great. Make sure you give me the link to get those recipes that you have on your website if it's not already in the show notes, okay? I will do that, yes. Great. Well, thank you everyone for the wonderful presentation and thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for Dr. Columbus Batiste. Take care, everyone.